How can I minimize scars from a hair transplant? Prior to establishing the non-surgical treatment for thinning hair, which we call trichostem hair regeneration, minimizing the scars from hair transplant surgery was one of the most significant challenges I faced when performing hair transplant. I'll discuss my perspective on how hair loss is optimally managed, including hair transplant surgery, as well as non-surgical hair loss treatment. I'm Dr. Amiya Prasad. I'm a board-certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship-trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years. I performed surgical hair transplant throughout my career with most of my experience being with FUT, which is an abbreviation for follicular unit transplantation, also known as strip surgery. The strip refers to the strip of hair-bearing skin that I would remove to use for hair grafts. As a cosmetic surgeon who routinely performs facial procedures such as facelift and brow lift, I focused on how to attain a well-healed, minimally perceptible scar. One of the tools I used in this effort was extracellular matrix by ACEL. This material enhances wound healing through the activation of your own adult stem cells. I routinely used this material to optimize healing for facelift incisions as well as for reconstructive procedures. This strategy worked out very well as I found the strip incisions to heal faster with overall better long-term results. I also used the same material to enhance the healing of the hair grafts. A major frustration with hair transplant surgery is that a percentage of hair grafts will not survive ranging from 10% to as high as over 90%. I found that with acellular matrix that the hair grafts healed much better and the survival rate of the grafts went up considerably. I also noticed that after one year that thinning hair located outside of the transplanted area actually increased in number and became thicker. This was the inspiration for my developing a system of treating thinning hair without surgery. Around the same time, the popularity of strip surgery was being overtaken by a different approach called FUE, or follicular unit extraction. This was essentially because of the frustration felt by people who had hair transplant surgery with what was referred to as ugly strip scars. In my opinion, the so-called ugly strip scars was the result of an aggressive single procedure or multiple strip harvesting creating significant skin shortage and tension resulting in suboptimal healing. I would also assert that many people were being operated on who were not good candidates for hair transplant surgery, which resulted in poor healing of the donor area incision. In many instances, if the patient had straight or wavy hair, these scars could be hidden. During this time, it became a popular trend, particularly for younger people, to wear their hair very short, making the strip scar less desirable. This resulted in a growing demand for FUE surgery, which was being marketed as scarless surgery. The term scarless surgery is inaccurate. The grafts are harvested in a much larger area than FUT surgery with small round skin punches. There needs to be a minimum distance between these punches, which results in a wide area of hair bearing skin to be harvested from. This area is way outside the true permanent hair zone. Further, the claim of scarless surgery is far from accurate. In actuality, there's considerably more scar tissue in comparison to an FUT or strip surgery. The more significant issue is the survival rate of hair grafts. In FUE surgery, it's generally understood that about 30% of grafts are transected, which means there is no root when the hair graft is being placed. In addition, due to the limited amount of tissue in each graft, the graft survival rate is lower in comparison to FUT or strip surgery. I find that when the question of minimizing scarring in hair transplant surgery is raised, 
it is predicated on an assumption that hair transplant surgery is the best option for your hair loss. This may not be the case. During the many years I've performed hair transplant, I found that most people who come in for consultation for hair transplant are men and women with thinning hair. Typically, they would come in when they felt that their hair loss was getting much worse. Frequently, the perception was that their hair loss was progressing much faster than it was over the past few years. The fact is that hair transplant surgery does nothing for hair thinning. As mentioned earlier, I developed Trichostem hair regeneration in part because I recognized that there was a potential to get results which could be better than surgical hair transplant. How could that be possible? Since most people coming in for consultation had thinning hair, I recognized that the density of their existing hair was much better than the density that would be created with the hair transplant. Native hairs exist naturally more close to each other than a hair transplant can safely achieve. The density of your native hair, even when thinning, can be 50 hairs per square centimeter, while a transplant is typically about 20 grafts per square centimeter. This means that reactivating hair that is not growing and thickening of your thinning hair can result in better coverage than hair transplant surgery. I worked every day on dosing and delivery methods for optimal results using acellular matrix and PRP or platelet-rich plasma. I followed my patients closely with high-resolution digital photography and microscopy every three to six months for years. It became clear that my hypothesis was right. Contrary to the assumptions of hair transplant surgeons for whom the first line of therapy for hair thinning is surgery, Trichostem hair regeneration provided more effective scalp coverage than even two hair transplant surgeries. In fact, the success of this system of hair loss inspired me to build a freestanding center in Northern Virginia to help make our system more accessible to more people. One variable that is relevant, particularly for people with good density, is that during hair transplant, much of the existing thin hairs are permanently lost because of direct trauma during surgery as well as vascular compromise and inflammation. This has always been well known as so-called collateral loss, with the rationale being that the thin native hairs were going to go away anyway and thicker hairs were being transplanted. When someone has already lost a lot of hair and they are losing their hair at a fast rate, hair transplant surgery cannot keep up with this degree of loss. Each surgery after the first typically has less hair to harvest for grafts. More surgery means more scars. I regularly see people who had several hair transplants over the course of five to 10 years and still they don't appear to have much hair. Now, with trichostem hair regeneration, this approach of performing multiple surgeries to keep up with progressive hair loss is no longer the first line of therapy for thinning hair. I feel that the only indication for hair transplant is to place hair in an area toward the front where the skin is smooth and bald for many years. For everyone else since 2011, trichostem hair regeneration has been the optimal system for men and women with thinning hair in my practice. There are, of course, limitations. Hair loss is not cured. Hair loss is managed. Medical therapies such as DHT blockers and hormone replacement can potentially optimize the longevity of hair growth. Hair loss is still going to progress. However, the option to improve your scalp coverage with one to two treatments performed over a two-year period with longevity of benefit being typically three to five years and in many situations even longer is far more accessible, convenient, less risky, and more economical than surgical hair transplant. 
Since 2011, I observed the hair loss profiles of a wide range of patients who came from around the world and developed a classification system for hair loss for men and women. This classification is used to create customized treatment plans based on gender, age, age of onset of hair loss, rate of progression, degree of hair loss, and other medical variables. I find that during consultation, I generally suggest hair transplant to be something to consider as a last option after achieving the full results of trichostem hair regeneration. 99 plus percent of my patients don't pursue hair transplant after trichostem hair regeneration. I've observed that most people look for a hair loss solution after they've passed a certain threshold of hair loss. This motivates them to pursue a solution. I find that once there is a significant improvement and a stable appearance for several years, they feel better and less anxious about their hair. In fact, many people who've undergone hair transplant come for trichostem hair regeneration. As mentioned earlier, since hair transplant does nothing for hair loss progression, many people who've had hair transplant have come to manage their thinning hair rather than undergoing a second hair transplant operation. In addition, we've treated many people who want to optimize their hair transplant results by coming in within the first three months after their surgery. The benefits of improving the hair transplant healing process coupled with reactivation and thickening of existing hair helps to optimize scalp coverage after surgery. In conclusion, the best way to minimize hair transplant scars is to not have a hair transplant at all. If hair transplant is going to be necessary, then I would suggest considering non-surgical options to maximize the coverage and longevity of your existing hair before considering hair transplant surgery. For people who want hair in a smooth and bald area, if there is hair present in the mid-scalp and crown, a procedure like trichostem hair regeneration can improve the total scalp coverage, so you won't need to be as aggressive with surgical hair transplant. I hope you found this information helpful. Thank you for your question. Mm -hmm.